Hey, Rebel Razor. I'm Alan Voivod, and this is Star Wars 7x7. We're at episode number 1751 today. Thank you so much for joining me for it. And today we're going to talk about the Death Star, and specifically a certain Death Star, or at least a piece of it, that we see on a grassy planet somewhere in the Star Wars galaxy far, far away. But the big question is, where is is this? Well, we know of only two Death Stars that were ever built. That's where the investigation shall begin. Now, thinking about the Death Star 2, that would be the one that was above the forest moon of Endor. So, one of the things that we know that is currently canon is that the Alliance to Restore the Republic, eventually then the New Republic, took you know, took efforts to try to protect Endor from any sort of environmental catastrophe by putting force fields in place around the planet to try to prevent debris from the exploding Death Star from falling down to the planet's surface. Whether they were actually successful, whether you know, they got all of it or not, eh, that we don't necessarily know for sure. But we do seem to know that you know, the planet wasn't necessarily being rocked by by debris falling, at least as it was depicted in the first issues of Shattered Empire, the comic book series that took place immediately after the events of Return of the Jedi. And that was part of the Journey to the Force Awakens publishing initiative. So, you know, we can possibly jump to a conclusion and say, no, not so much. So then the next question becomes, well, if not... It had to land somewhere, and you have to believe that an explosion like that wouldn't necessarily just have you know the debris stay within the Endor system. No, it could have actually blown much farther away. And so where might it have gotten to? Well, looking at the Galactic Atlas, at least, you know, like we don't necessarily have complete maps to the level that we used to before the expanded universe became legend, so Obviously, there were about two decades worth of material and documentation about the galaxy that we had there that's now essentially been wiped, and we don't know for sure whether a lot of it is going to still be considered legit or not. But, you know, looking at the Galactic Atlas, there are only a couple planets near Endor that, based on just the, you know, the limited knowledge we have, would potentially you know, be places where debris from the exploding Death Star could have gotten to. One of them is a place called Rat Attack, which, you know, if we go by the idea that planets in Star Wars tend to have, you know, one type of geography, and, you know, naturally they don't, but that's kind of how they get defined in Star Wars, then Rat Attack is not going to be the planet because it doesn't have that grassland ocean situation. There is a planet called Saria, but, you know, also doesn't seem exactly that close. So I think we really need to be talking about the planet Yavin and the Death Star nearby that planet because there are actually a lot of interesting planets that are nearby Yavin that you know, could have some potential for having received a piece of a Death Star and there was no effort by you know any organization necessarily to try to deal with the debris of the Death Star aside from you know salvagers trying to work on it or anything like that. So there are actually four planets that are rather interesting that are right in the general neighborhood of Yavin 4 and you know 30, 35 years later could a piece of that Death Star have shown up there? Yes, certainly that's the case. So one of them would be the planet Sereno. And Sereno, for those of you who are familiar with the Clone Wars or have read into the backstory of this particular character, know that that is the home world of Count Dooku. And Wikipedia describes the planet as being covered with lush forests and mountains and plains, and so that would certainly factor in. There's also another planet nearby, and I'm going to botch the pronunciation of it, named St Stygian Prime? St Stygian Prime? You know, if I went and dug up the Clone Wars episode for, <laughs> related to this, then I'd probably be able to get the pronunciation right. But that one also plays a role in that same prequel area time period, 
because it was a snowy planet. And as we talked about yesterday, we saw what appeared to be a snowy planet very briefly in the teaser trailer for The Rise of Skywalker. And this one actually has a Palpatine connection too, because Palpatine and Dooku imprisoned Darth Maul there at one point in a prison called the Spire on this planet until such time as he was freed by a group of Mandalorians known as the Shadow Collective. So <laughs> there's that too. There is another grassland planet, though, that's in the general vicinity that was also visited in the Clone Wars cartoon series. And that planet is called Maradun, and among the notable inhabitants are a species of creature called the Lerman, who are utterly and completely pacifists, and were actually angry when the Jedi showed up to intervene in a situation where Separatists were pretending to be friendly to them, but were in fact preparing to test a very devastating weapon on them. So that's three planets that, you know, two of them could be grassland potential planets where a piece of the Death Star could have potentially gotten to 30 odd years after the explosion of the first Death Star near Yavin. And a rather interesting coincidence that a mountainous snowy planet also happens to be in the same general neighborhood. And we saw that one in the, you know, or saw a snowy mountainous planet in the trailer. But there is one other planet that also happens to be in the neighborhood. And the fact that it is in this general vicinity is also really rather amazing and alarming at the same time. And I'll share which one that is after the break. Stay tuned. Hey there. If you're enjoying all the coverage that I'm bringing you from Star Wars Celebration and what I do every single day for you at Star Wars 7x7, I hope you'll consider putting something in the tip jar at patreon.com slash sw7x7. $1, 327, 501 or more. Honestly, every little bit helps and every little bit is just as exciting as every other little bit. Please consider supporting me in the work of delivering Star Wars stories and interviews to you on a daily basis at patreon.com slash SW7X7. Welcome back. So this other planet, which you know can't be this grassy planet or whatever, but just the mere fact that it's nearby is rather surprising, is Moriband, also known in antiquity as Korriband. It is a planet of the ancient Sith Lords, and it's also the final resting place of Darth Bane, who is famous for having created the Rule of Two for the Sith, and Yoda actually went there at the very end of the Clone Wars series, at least as it stood at the time before they started working on a seventh season. But in those Lost Missions episodes that appeared on Netflix in season six, he actually went to Moraband. And why did he go there, you might ask? To seek out the secrets of eternal consciousness as it's put in Wikipedia. In other words, how to become a force ghost. And, you know, isn't it fascinating that we have a dead Emperor Palpatine now laughing at us in the Rise of Skywalker trailer, and we happen to be in the general vicinity of Yavin 4, or at least there was a Death Star in the vicinity where it blew up, where a piece of it may have landed in a grassy planet that could also be in the vicinity that could also be in the vicinity of you see where I'm going with this. So... <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, man. So, ultimately, I guess the question goes to you. What Death Star do you think is being represented by that piece in The Rise of Skywalker? Is it DS1 over Yavin or DS2 over Endor? And do you think that we're actually going to see some planets that might have appeared in other Star Wars stories, or are we going to be dropping in on new planets as well? Personally, I think the fact that they've talked about this tying up not just the sequel trilogy, but also all nine movies, and they've talked about bringing in elements of the prequel trilogy era, well, now I think we have some things that might fit that bill. So I'd love to hear what you think about it. Drop me a line wherever you happen to catch this episode or at home base for the show at SW7X7.com. For now, though, that is going to do it for this episode, and thank you again so much for joining me for it. And may the Force be with you, wherever in the world you may be podcast is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox. It is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other related Star Wars items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2019 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.